Good evening, everybody. Do you think people can see me yet, love? Do you think people can see me? I think so, yeah. I think Oh, can. my God. I mean, oh, my God. Good evening, everybody. Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome. My name is Lucy, and on the behalf of everyone at Better Red Than Dead, we are so excited to see you on Zoom to celebrate Alana Hill's latest book, The Handbag of Happiness. Alana is joined in conversation tonight by Janice Breen Burns. Please note that tonight's event is being recorded, so if you would not like to be filmed, please turn off your camera settings. Before we begin the proceedings, I would like to acknowledge and pay respect to the traditional owners of the lands on which we meet. These will be different depending on where you're zooming in from. For me, it is the land of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. It is upon their ancestral lands that Better Ed Than Dead is built. We pay our respects to Elders past, present and emerging and acknowledge this, that this always was and always will be Aboriginal land. We are joined tonight by Alana Hill. Alana Hill is an iconic designer, best-selling author and sought after public speaker. For 17 years, she was the creative director of the trailblazing brand she founded, Alana Hill. In 2015, she left and launched her own label, Louise Love. Alana's memoir, Butterfly on a Pin, was released to critical acclaim in 2018. And we are here tonight to celebrate the release of her latest book, The Handbag of Happiness. Alana is joined in conversation tonight by Janice Breen Burns. Janice is a highly respected fashion journalist, editor, and features writer of more than 30 years ex experience in Metro Daily newspapers and more recently, digital media. Boxproc.com.au is her blog scene loosely based on the variety of content and style of newspaper fashion pages. Janice is renowned for her industry knowledge and witty, realistic insights into the role of fashion in everyday life. She is a frequent contributor to workshops and seminars, industry panels, radio and television reports relevant to fashion and its culture. We have an Auslan interpreter for tonight's event. If you would like to see them, you can switch your view to gallery view. If you would like to make your view of the interpreter larger, you can use the pin function on Zoom. There will be a Q&A session towards the end. Please type any questions you may have for Alana into the group chat and she will answer them via video once the time comes. Without further ado, here's Janice to kick things off. Mm. Hello everyone and um, thanks Lucy. That was a gorgeous introduction. And Alana, it is so good to see you. You're looking absolutely beautiful. Well, I've just realized that um, was I on camera for the last three or four minutes because I've been were, applying makeup. Were. I've been, I, I've been. God knows what I could have done. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not that good with the zoom, love. <laughs> you, you're zooming okay. You, mm. you, you, we, you go, zooming okay. Yeah, well, there was um, a little bit of a disaster, love, before I started. I have locked myself out of the bathroom, so all my, all my, my glasses are in there. My, my outfit was in there, and the bathroom door slammed and the handle fell off and I can't get back in. So you're without all your girly tools. Is, yeah, I am. Yeah, this but I, really I reckon you've scrubbed raw. up pretty well. You've scrubbed up pretty well. For not well, the heated hair rollers, awesome. I had to do something with the contraption that it's burnt, <laughs> it's burnt it my awesome. hair. I'm frizzled. There's frizzle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit worried about your spectacles, darling, because yeah, I know. you're going to do a I, I think I can work. go. I, I, I'll, I'll just look a little bit... Um, I just won't be as, as literary as I'd like to be, but I'll, I'll, I'll try. You're always very literary. And, and uh, if anybody hasn't seen it yet, there's the book. And uh, I love, again, I love your prose style. It's, um, it's gorgeous. It reminds me uh, of your first book's title, um, Butterfly, but less butterfly on a pin, butterfly flitting from flower to flower to flower. You have this incredible poetic, floral, florid way of expressing yourself and jumping from subject to subject. And it's an absolute delight. One of the gorgeous things about it, which I found last night because I started reading it out loud, was hearing it being read out loud. You are, you oh. have sort of prose that is fantastic for reading aloud. So I'm hoping that you'll start by reading one of the, our favourite chapters, the faux fur of the fume, and embedded in that chapter is a couple of surprises. So take it away, Alana. Well, I, I hope the surprises, I, I'm only going to read the, um, I can't read it all because I fear of boring people and it's a little bit long. And look, I've lost my space already because I haven't got my glasses. Um, what page is that on, Jan, love? 
<laughs> what, what page? Oh, here we are. Both no, heard. what you you it's it's two hundred and three. I've got it. I've got it. So this is the faux fur of the fume. Are you weary of feeling outbursts of anger, sick to death of fuming, annoyed and outraged by the smallest of things? I am. I've been angry, fuming, annoyed and outraged for two decades. Anger is a, is a sign, and anger in a woman is a sign that she's been deeply hurt by the world and everything around her, the hurt bottling itself up as rage. No matter our age, dear reader, women are really, really angry because there's a lot to be angry about. Get ready to be 40 because that's when our real anger comes out. A premenopausal woman brings a lot of wisdom, grace and poise to life. She doesn't suffer fools and often enjoys a wine or six of an evening to block out her burning rage. Unfortunately, a woman over 40 also carries a suitcase of jagged emotions that psychologists like to anger, liken to anger. I call it the fume. Now, dear reader, the fume can happen to the best of us, anytime, any place, anywhere. In fact, it's probably happening to you right now. The fume can simmer on low heat for days, like a witch's cauldron loaded with poisonous berries and lemon rind. Simmer, simmer, simmer. Fume, fume, fume. Simmer, simmer. Fume, fume. The simmering eventually boils right over, like milk left on a hot plate, staining the stovetop with a residue of burnt cream. As I grow older, my outbursts of fury were becoming more and more frequent and people were starting to notice. I started to take out my rage on other people. One particular fume-filled week, I pulled a driver, a driver over with my howling new police siren, purchased on eBay for $120 with three volumes. Naturally, I used the loudest volume. It's quite remarkable what people do when they hear a police siren, they all pull over. In the same week, I threatened a truck driver with a phony $250 fine for abusive behaviour. And not long after that, I swiped another driver's car after he roared at me for changing lanes without using an indicator. When people asked me, how are you? I'd reply, fuming, I'm bloody fuming. And when people texted me and asked, how are you? I'd reply, fuming, I'm bloody fuming. People thought I was joking, but I wasn't. I'd fume if my favourite checkout girl at the IGA wasn't friendly enough on the register. I'd fume at Edward's teacher if they suggested I wasn't teaching Ed the value of homework. I'd fume at stray cats, at my hair that wouldn't tease, at indolent teenagers, know-it-all teenagers, loved-up couples, dog owners, neighbours, the iPhone charger that kept going missing, Telstra's callback line, the ATO, crowds, malls, most people. And look, I could write a list of 10,000 things and I still wouldn't be done. I was shoutier and hissier than an alley cat without an alley. And I feared if something didn't change soon, that pissed off alley cat would be me. I thought getting rich quick might cure the fume. How rich are you? How rich am I? Not rich enough, I hear you cry. Yes. I was under the greatest delusion of all time that if I became filthy, filthy rich, I'd stop fuming at the smallest of things. I thought being filthy rich would enable me to live a, a more spontaneous, enriching life in which I'd be happier and kinder. We're all guilty of wishfully thinking that being filthy, filthy rich will cure our problems. I controlled my fuming with fantasies. Masquerading as both Bonnie and Clyde, I'd planned to rob a bank in a small suburb on the outskirts of Melbourne. I'd already cased a joint and given a fair amount of thought to a black getaway car and the kind of bag I should take to fill with $100 notes. In another moment of pure greediness, I would turn to Tom Ford for inspiration. As one of the world's most famous fashion designers, Tom is super rich and super cool 
and I had several pairs of his sunglasses. Wearing a faux fur mink coat and a pair of jet black Tom Fords on my inquisitive face, I'd imagine asking Tom, how can I become independently wealthy, prosperous, and unbearably horribly well off? In other words, Tom, how can I become filthy, filthy rich? Tom never answered. He was too rich. My fantasies began to escalate. I imagined purchasing a powder blue Rolls Royce from Jackie Collins' podiatrist. Fancy gold lettering on the front number plate, spelling filthy. Even fancier silver lettering on the black number plate, spelling rich. Dripping in wealth, I'd welcome Joan Collins, Joan Rivers along for the ride. In my fantasy, Joan was immortal and she'd spot my powder blue Rolls Royce in a valet parking at Saks Beverly Hills. Joan would be thrilled to see the likes of me, filthy rich and all dressed up like Zaza Gabor, hurtling across the intersection of Hollywood and Vine in my powder blue Rolls. And as I ran from the sky, from the car in sky high Prada Hills, Joan and her bejeweled microphone would be suddenly thrust at my plumped up filthy rich lips. Alana, how did you get so filthy rich? I'm going to leave a bit out there and then I'll get on to the, the, the good bit here. I don't care for Facebook's gormless, robotic, unlikable founder, but Facebook, Facebook did make him a trillionaire. I couldn't do anything that involved social networking, even if, it was, even if it was only online. Computer mistakes fanned my fuming fume. I couldn't get rich that way. But Facebook owned apps and they'd been downloaded 16 billion times. I worked out that if I took, say, even a tenth of Zuckerberg's market, I could be filthy, filthy rich in less than a year. There was the answer. That was it. I needed to create an app. And I'll go on to say that I did create that app. And you'll have to read the book to find out what happened to the app. I didn't get, I didn't get filthy, filthy rich, which was a real shame. Fantastic. And, and the, you, didn't finish, you didn't finish developing that app, but gosh, it was a good, it was a good idea. I think the, the app worked against me. The, the thing about uh, the, the faux fur of the fume is, is it's, it's so topical right now because uh, everybody seems to be enraged about so many things at the moment. There's, uh, there's COVID and there's Trump. Um, there's even Trump, ourselves, loves. We're angry with ourselves. And ourselves and ourselves mm -hmm. and, and our un, unrequited loves and our, our uh, unbegotten dreams. Um, well, and I think anger, anger's not really, like, it's not like I'm angry and I'm shouting and I'm saying I'm not shouting. It's just this inner, this inner fume that I think a lot of women get because we're so, we get so frustrated by the smallest of things and people annoy us and we can't suffer fools. Mm -hmm. And we're suffering well, a big fool at the moment, aren't we? Well, I think that's. People are a little people are a little bit annoying sometimes, and there's, there's, there is a lot to be angry about. Look what's happening in America, mm. and look what's happening. With, like we've been in lockdown for almost a year, mm. Mm. I and I, I wasn't I wasn't actually angry about that. I was quite thrilled with that. But you were. I I know from uh, from our little chat before that you were very angry about uh, Donald Trump, and I think uh, like so many people, you're absolutely traumatized. So we've 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 got a big list of things to fume about. But right at the top of the list at the moment seems to be the Donald. What do you think of him? My God, <laughs> I think Donald is one of the most dangerous, most evil. Uh, malignant narcissists that, I, that, I've, that I've never not met. I actually have fantasies, and I know this is terrible because I'm obsessed with CNN and, and MSNBC and CB. I, I watch everything on, on him. And I've actually had fantasies. I, I don't know if this is weird or not. I, 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 I don't know if I, if I should tell you, but I, I imagine that I'm in America on a book tour that... Uh, that Trump pulls me out of the crowd because he thinks I'm working for Fox, but I'm not. And I ask him questions and then I tape him. And then I have the tape and I say, you've either got to resign or I'm going to let this tape out because he, he tells me everything. He opens up to me and tells me everything. And then I have to sort of extort him. And then, and then I sort of save America because I've outed Trump. Now, I, I know that's a little bit narcissistic, <laughs> but, but it's, it's how far I'll go because I, I think 
he's, I mean, you've got to remember, he, he will go to jail uh, when this election's mm. finished. Mm. So he, what would you do to win? Like, you would do anything. You would kill people. He, he would do anything because he's, he's going to be in jail. This, um, this presidency gave him complete, complete immunity. Can mm. you see how I'm sounding a little bit like an anchor, like a CNN anchor? Mm. <laughs> yeah. I've copied their style. You could. I think I think his um, his um, most outrageous <coughs> crime at the moment is that kind of air punching dad dance that he's doing at the moment in those terrible suits. But love, you've got to remember that he's actually he's un, he's actually unwell. Mm. Like, it's oh. sort of sad. I mean, it's not sad, but he's. I don't know why someone hasn't stepped in one of the you know Ivanka. I mm. mean, she's they're, they're such dreadful children. I mean, they, they couldn't be worse, really. <laughs> And um, they are dreadful. The sight of Ivanka and that dreadful husband in the morning can put me into a dreadful state of fume. I can be fuming for days over her. I think it's interesting too. Uh, and um, uh, one of the things that I, the conversations that I have with a lot of women, because you've mentioned that this fume seems to be common among women, mm. is um, the dreams that we're fed as girls uh, are very evocative and they're very lovely. And you sort of you sort of embodied them for a lot of your career. This uh, you know this girly princess floral fantasy kind of thing. And when you get to a certain age as a woman, you realise it's never going to happen. What's never going to happen though? those dreams the knight in shining armor is not going to come and rescue you you're not going to be gorgeous and and um uh, have uh, be a princess for the rest of your life i mean reality steps in it's and quite for, like, for me love the whole idea of I, I would have loved being told i was a princess when i was small and i don't want to go on about my past love but i i, I don't know that feels like i always expected the worst and i think it's good to train your children to expect the worst in every situation, expect the worst at work, expect the worst on a date. I've expected the very, very worst from this Zoom call, knowing that I'll be th quite thrilled at the end because then I won't be disappointed. I think people should go into things with very, very, very low expectations, Jan. I can't imagine that you're, I've never thought of you as a pessimist, though, Alana. Oh, I'm not a pessimist, love. I just, no. I just like to, it's a way I deal with things to just think, well, this is going to be terrible. Um, you're going to look <laughs> terrible in that dress and no one's going to like you there and the book will not sell and you'll be a complete and utter loser. <laughs> and, then, and then I get a little bit surprised when people um, seem a little bit excited by me. You are, you, you're a very exciting person. I, I, I want to ask you about that because there are so many people that uh, obviously have a, a great emotional and frank admiration for you. I wondered whether you have that for anybody else. Is there, is, are there people in your life or people uh, um, out, outside your orbit that you, you really admire in that same way? There's not many, love. Mm -hmm. I, know that's, I know that's awful. Um, but I do have, um, there's, there's one woman, I hope she's listening, um, that I do respect. Her name's Andrea. She helps with me with all my books. If it wasn't for her, Handbag of Happiness would have been full of, it would have been called My Dreadful Mistakes, um, <laughs> laugh, laugh at me. Um, I, 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 um, I respect Andrea and I also, Andrea McNamara, and I respect Rachel Maddow. I don't know if any of you know Rachel Maddow, unless you're a CNN person, but she's on MSB and MSB and MSB, MSNBC. MSNBC or something. And she wears the same outfit every night and she's warm and she's, and because I don't have many girlfriends and I get, and I'm alone a lot, unfortunately, I, I think Rachel's my friend. I, I, I know she's not, but I, I, she's, 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 she writes. Does she know? <laughs> this she, this she, well, and then I found out that she's a lesbian with a, twin, a girlfriend that's 20 years older and I loved her even more. Mm. You should, she, and she explains she explains what's happening in very real terms mm. she's, she's, she's you, you really put me on to her and I I really I have to say I really did admire she's very um she's very gutsy and punchy isn't she but, oh everyone um, loves that she's mm. she's if you um if you if you get the interview with um with Rachel Maddow that's, she gets all the special interviews. Mm. A bit like you, a bit like you, Jan Breen Burns. You get all the special interviews. <laughs> You're the Rachel Maddow well, of bloody Melbourne. 
this is <laughs> indicative of, of my reputation, of course. Mm, sure, <laughs> so sure. So Rachel, Rachel Maddow, M-A-D-D-O-W, if anybody's interested in yes. following her up. She's and I've even done something a little bit more tragic than that, uh, than the normal. I've, I've, um, I've been outed, though, because I, I, I've... I've chummed up with all the um, the Lincoln Project, all the American um, emails, and and sometimes I, I reach out to them and just tell them what a great job they're doing and and how great they are. And then someone, sometimes people from Australia, like my comment and go, "Oh, hi, Lana, do you like them too?" And I'm like, "Oh, they know that they know I'm writing to my anchors, to my crushes." <laughs> so I get I get quite a shame, but that's a good chapter in the book because I do try to teach people to because we all feel shame we, we, we I think we do 10 things 10 things a day that we think shame shame on you shame on you Lana mm. and there's a chapter there where I take the e out of shame mm. turn it That's into the sham the sham mm. um tell me why you just mentioned before you're alone a lot and you don't have a, a lot of close girlfriends is that mm. one of the reasons I I I I'm also surprised by that because I assume that you had, uh, because you are such an open facing person, you will talk mm. to anybody, you're very warm, you're very friendly. And there's a couple of chapters in the book where that is that is played out in, in the most hilarious, entertaining way. And the, fir the first chapter is an example where you, you uh, interface with someone called um, No Ears and uh, eventually your trust is, is not returned and your house is burgled by this, this character. But, yes. but my point you is... You love No Ears. Very... Jan loves that she wants to talk about No Ears a lot. She's obsessed with <laughs> it. No, no Ears is someone, because uh, I, I, I do... I'm very attracted to a loner or a misfit or a crim or a homeless person or, I, I, you know, to the underdogs. And I've, I've trained myself not to look at them, not to stare at them. But one particular night I went to the IGA in one of my walks and I saw this person, he had a singlet on, he was staring at me and, and, and he, if someone gives me a compliment, it, it's, it, I'm sort of easy game. And he said, you're beautiful, darling. You're beautiful, darling. And I thought, oh, oh. And then he walked up to me and said, oh, I suppose I could have one of your flowers. Because I had a flower in, flowers in my arms. And then I noticed that he had no ears. Cut off, just no ears. Mm. And I said, love, how can you hear me with no ears? He said, don't you know anything about ears? Your eardrums are down here. It doesn't matter if you haven't got ears. They got cut off in jail. And so basically he got, it, he got his ears cut off for a gram of meth in, in jail. And then he followed the next... I chummed up with him a little bit, um, walked back to the back home. Back home the next morning, I the boot of my car was open. I went to get back in. No ears is sitting in my in my car, in the driver's seat. He looked at me. I don't know how he got in. He looked at me, and I looked at him. I thought it's no ears, and he was going insane in the car. He was ripping the car to shreds and going, "You fucking bitch! You're a fucking bitch!" And no ears. I was terrified, but I, I, I thought, and I said, get out of the car, get out of the car. So the, the, the story there is that um, Noe's ended up going to jail and it's quite sad because he's... It's very, it's very sad, but it's a, it's it's a fantastic sad. story and it's a great, I think it's a great example of, of that interface that I was talking about before. You're, to you're, you're, you're totally shameless which is interesting because you always talk about shame but you're totally shameless you will talk warmly and in a friendly manner to anybody um you seem to be you seem to lack fear uh i mean no the no ears um is an example of of um you know, i chased him up the road i chased him up the road and demanded my iphone back mm -hmm. and then took photographs of him as he lunged towards me there i was a i was a hero and oh. three workmen ne next door didn't even bother to stop and help. There you go. Yep. Yes. Well, that, that's, 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 just about, that's, that's talking about another kind of person, isn't it? Back to me about being warm and giving and kind. Wow. I can be that, but I, I, you know, I can also be a little bit. I could be a little bit, a little bit of a bitch. Mm. I can be a bit no. of a. No. I can be a little bit of a bitch. <laughs> a lot, yeah, I can. No, no, I wouldn't say a bitch. It's just a little bit. Bracey. Judgmental. I'm very, very judge. I judge people by their shoes. I'm a little bit judgy over here, a little bit judgy over there. There's a lot of judgment going on. 
um, well, which which of course feeds into one of the one of the things that you like to do is to be alone sometimes. And I know there was there was a um, there was a ch there's a chapter in um, the handbag of happiness where that gorgeous raw poetry that you have a great talent for just uh, comes to the fore when you're talking about uh, nightmares and I suppose you're talking about depression though you don't actually um, name it that for yourself um, mm -hmm. but, but squidding clouds um, springs to mind and there was mm -hmm. another incident where you 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 ran away to Italy you you do all kinds of things when you're when you're the storm clouds are gathering, don't you? So do. um, so I've got two quest a two tiered question for you. Yeah. Was the COVID lockdown was that good for you or bad for you? Did it coincide with the time when you were happy to be alone? Oh, love. Um, COVID. I, I was. I don't really actually even call it a depression. I don't like that word depression. It's far too heavy. I call it the silent sadness. And I think we all have silent sadness where, you know, we have we have to learn how to be alone. And the only, only way to learn how to be alone is to be alone. And a lot of people fear being alone because we're, you know, we're running from the past, we're running from the future, we're running from, we're on the run from ourselves and each, you know, from everything. So to sit alone is, it's, it's not many people can do it. Mm. They either drink or they, they, it's hard to get through life and fill in 24 hours a day without um, feeling a little bit bleak at times. And I, and I do believe that I've always thought that, that happiness was, you had to really, really earn happiness. I really did. And so I, I used to, um, I, I really, that's what Handbag of Happiness, the first story is about. It's, you know, how men say, what, you know, you women are never bloody happy. You're never bloody happy. What makes you bloody women happy? And, and the truth is, nothing really makes us happy. You know, a lot of things do, but, but only for 10 minutes. And then, you know, the seconds and the hours in between, and the minutes in between that, that time, within that 10 minutes, is sort of worth fighting for because everyone's just on this hell-bent journey of I've got to be happy, I've got to be happy, I've, I'm not happy enough. Um, and sometimes I think it's good just to admit that we are only happy 10 minutes out of every hour. Mm -hmm. and, and I think once you accept that, it, it, it's, life can be a little bit easier. I'm quite surprised when I'm happy. In fact, I don't even know I'm happy till days have gone past and I, and I remember and I'm feeling a bit bleak and I think oh, I was happy three days ago. But when you're really happy, the the ironic the irony is that you you can't feel it because you're so you're so busy being happy. You're only um, do you know what I mean by that? Not along. Mm. I I, th I think you're lucky if you if you um, have uh, tools and strategies for dealing with it, and you obviously do. I do love because if I didn't, I I'd, and what really I think helps me is my. My, my 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 makeup because mm. it's the one thing I do that you know I have to reinvent myself and and I get to know the you know the, the whatever pain I went through yesterday I you know I, I crease that out with a little bit of foundation or I, if I've had a bit of a tear today before I can you know put something on underneath it but I what was your great question again love it was something to do with you have, you have you have ways of pulling yourself up by your bootstraps really you have strategies for dealing with the the dark clouds the silent the silent sadness you have ways of and i think people should follow out that. getting through it i think people should follow those follow some of my rules i've got 10 rules that i stick with you know to, to um to deal with the silent sadness and you know the first one is to invest in a broom because sweeping and vacuuming and mopping it is it really does help because you can you, you, you see the cleanness cleanness going ahead the, where the floor was dirty I, I think you know I don't think there's anything wrong with just giving into it sometimes like just thinking no platitudes are going to help me I don't want to ring any friends and then just say oh, pick yourself up girl pick yourself up chin up you know it's a sunny day outside that can be the worst thing when you're in the middle of a, a, a silent sadness 
you just get furious with that person. You think, and that's why I don't really have a lot of close girlfriends because I, I wouldn't want to inflict, you know, the bad side of Alana onto them. Mm. So you're thinking of that, that is a, a bad side of Alana, but it sounds like you've sort of worked it into the landscape of your life. It's just... Oh, she's you know, very boring now. Mm. The bad, bad Alana, she, you know, she, I put on the blessing gown. Uh, oh, the, the blessing <laughs> gown. I, I should go and get it, actually. It's rather fancy. It's it's a, <laughs> it's like a kimono. It's vintage. and <laughs> But I don't like Ed to see... I don't like my son to see me in that in that mood. So I sometimes I go for a drive. Mm. But I'm not I'm not the type of person that deals with the black, the, the bleakness by you know by not being able to get out of bed. Like some people actually just can't get out of bed, mm. and I, I, mine's more of a, a frenetic. I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not doing I'm not, I'm not everything's a bit too slow. I'm I'm not making um, the best use of my time. I'm I'm guarding Edward too much. I'm 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 stalking his bedroom far too much. <laughs> That was a cough. That's not COVID, love. No. <laughs> right. Let's talk about your writing because uh, I, I'd like to know, do you actually, is that is that in your toolbox too? When you're writing, is it is it cathartic? Is it stressful? Is it is it soothing? Is it, how are you, because quite a lot of the time you're dealing with these really difficult, uh, well, particularly with butterfly, mm. you're dealing with difficult, difficult issues from, from, uh, from rape to um, to being alone, utterly alone at the age. Don't forget the, don't forget the sort of in, the incest there, love. Not the oh, incest. Sorry, yeah. and, and the incest. Yeah. Um, so yeah, some, the, pre, some pretty some pretty things. So tell me about well, writing. Well, writing writing um, butterfly and a pin. I I found that I I, I found that because I I really had blocked a lot of it out, and so writing. Remembering the scenes, remembering uh, the feelings, um, and there was, you know, there was no photographs of us. You know, Mum didn't believe in photographs. There was no photographs. There was, there was nothing to remember. What would I even? I don't even know what I looked like. So um, writing that was, um, it was, it was, it was very bleak. It, it, it was, it was. But I, I sort of enjoyed it. But after I finished it. I didn't have any um, cathartic feelings because it was, you know, I had I had lawyers mm. after me. I had um, the first uh, the first um, publisher because the lawyers were hot on my tail for no reason. It was not like I murdered somebody. I just um, just someone stole my name, and I was trying to deal with it. And um, so they, you know, it was it was it was it, it was a long journey that three years mm. and then when I finished uh, Butterfly I thought there's no more words left I've said all I've wanted to say I've like each each chapter and each word in Butterfly was you know it's quite gothic and and, and it's quite poetic and so when I finished it I, I thought this is not, I've got nothing left to say and then people were writing to me and saying, oh, we, we need to hear more. You, you're so entertaining. So there's, so, there's so many funny bits of Butterfly. And I thought, I sat down with Andrea again, Andrea McNamara, and I said, well, how do we work this out? And we worked with the Hardy Grant publishers and just thought, we'll write 18 short stories. Uh, they had to be um, autobiographical. They weren't allowed to cross over with Butterfly. There's actually quite a lot of rules they placed on me. I don't know how <laughs> I didn't break them. Um, and I learned, you know, I learned about boundaries for the first time when I wrote um, Handbag of Happiness. I didn't know what a boundary was. My editor said, um, and then you need to write, uh, there's a whole section in there, but I, I took Edward away somewhere and with a nanny and, mm. and the nanny went missing and, um, and just because I didn't place any boundaries on it. And I didn't have a clue what she was talking about. I said, what do you mean mm. boundaries? She said, boundaries. I said, I, I don't, I've never had a boundary. I don't know what, because I, I just... You know, people who are movers and shakers who who want to be successful, they don't know what a boundary is because their their life is you live your life as as what you want to be successful as. So you you're working seven days a week. You call people at three in the morning and say, you know, that that cardigan. Um, I think we should do a size. Um, I think we should add a blue. I, I didn't ring them that at that time, but you're always on the job. You're always on the go. Mm. 
Mm. Did I answer that question? Maybe no, I didn't. you didn't at all. Okay. You're wonderful. What was the question again? No? <laughs> what do I have my writing? Oh, yeah, and then I, will write. I don't write. Just I don't just wake up and, and just write. I have to have a reason. I have to have a book. What do you it. wear when you write? Do you so, wear high heel? Are you are you wearing the the blessing gown or are you wearing uh, a fascinator and a full foofed hair and frocklet sure. and heels? What do sure. what are you what are you wearing? Well, love, you know, even if someone said you're not going to see someone for four days, no one's going to see you for four days. I would still be poshed up, be, be mm-hmm. dressed up. I, I must say, I'm not I'm not as bad, as not as dressed up as I used to. I've got a um. I've got a couple of jumpers. I put a couple of jumpers on. I wear a slip. I always wear a stocking and quite a fancy shoe. My hair and makeup are all, is always superb. It is in <laughs> case Uber Eats deliver. I mean, the only person that knocks on the door is Uber Eats. And so if someone knocked on the door, I'd completely freak out. But I am a bit, um, uh, I'm not casual. There, there's no pants. There's no tracksuit situation. There's no T-shirt situation. And there's no jean situation. <laughs> but so you, you feel like you you actually create the scene like the, I have to create the scene for your writing mm-hmm. i do i have to there are, there's a few things i have to do before i can start writing the, the floors have to be vacuumed i've got to be made up um i've got to the dog's got to be fed i've got to make the bed's got to be made i've got to i've got to i've got to be on a um I've got to be almost run out of time. I've got the editor saying, you said that chapter would be here yesterday. Mm-hmm, really? I've done it. I've actually finished it. Oh, my God. Oh, the internet's gone down. <laughs> so I have to, I like to work with pressure. Mm. And at the moment I'm, um, I'm, I'm writing a third book, but because it's not, I'm, I'm concentrating on this and there's not a lot of pressure yet. I'm dawdling along, dawdling along. <laughs> you, you and I are soul sisters in that matter. I, I need, I need the the hounds at my heels, as we say. I remember you told me once that you signed a book deal and that you nearly lost your mind yeah. after you signed it. And I think you might have even gotten out of it. Uh, no, 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 no. I, I yeah, had it published, but but this is I I did in, my my one and only book was published in 1996, and I and there will never be another. <laughs> Tell me why, I love. Um, uh, well, um, yeah, tell me. it was, it was too much. The pressure was too much and I couldn't deal with it. And at the time, I, look, this is about you. I had three, three kids under seven. I was, yeah, that's enough. That's I was studying, for, I was doing some post-grad work at uni. I was working full time. I was, you know, it was insane. It's, it well, was, it's, it's insane. terrifying. It, it we put, terrifying. We put too much pressure on ourselves, I think, don't you? I think we have to love. Mm. I think we, should, we could even put a little bit more pressure on ourselves. Yeah, up. but sometimes that produces um, incredible works like Butterfly on a Pin and oh, yes. Handbag of Happiness. You know, maybe that's that's obviously what you need. You do, you do. I do need mm. the pressure. I, I really do. Mm. Mm. And, and I, I also think that, you know, you know I, wanted to, I wanted to write a book, you know, that was entertaining and also, you know, each chapter has... Um, an emotion and an, and an outfit with it, like it's the cardigan of solitude, mm. the um, the collar of disdain, um, the frock of triumph. Um, so I wanted to make each story quite poignant and I make a bit of a fool of myself and I'm a little very self-deprecating, but mm. they're, they're true stories. Like when I, um, and each, each one has a, you know, a cautionary tale or a pearl of wisdom at the end where I sound like a mini Oprah. In fact, you'd, you'd think <laughs> I was Oprah. I have these little with pearls of wisdom. You know, it, it's like um, the handkerchief of bravado, where it's where you live, your, you know, you know those dreams where you, all your teeth, you wake, you wake up, your teeth are oh, out. Oh, that's your horrible. I, I, had a ter- I had a nightmare myself just reading that. Yeah, yeah, your teeth crumble. It's a dreadful mm. dream. Well, mm. that that actually happened to me in real life. Mm. You, you're... Mm. They didn't come. It, 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 I, I wanted to, um, I would tell you this in private, but I've actually seen that happen to another um, person who's quite, you there at the quite event a legend in fashion. Were you there at the event when my tooth flew no, into No, I was I was at a different event when another fashion doyan uh, lost her tooth, was talking, and it spun across the room. So you sure it wasn't me? Because like, that's my exact story. No, it, wasn't, it wasn't you. It wasn't mine you. fell into the CEO's cup of wine. <laughs> but I think well, I this one skittered across the floor. 
A very, a very famous boutique. Who, who was that? Oh, I'm not going to tell. <laughs> it, was the it was the den again. It was You're outrageous. Funny. I'm not going to divulge that. We'll, that we'll, we'll move on to another subject. Okay, love. We're, we're almost running out of time, which is, I can't what believe shame. it. Shame. Shame. Yes. I love that. I, 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 bet I must have been a little bit lonely, love. Because Ed, <laughs> Edward's ours. He's never here. <laughs> now that COVID's down, I had him tied on my apron strings yeah. a thousand bows. He was just, and now it's a bit like, I, I, I don't see him. It's terrible. I, I've, I'm, I've prom- yeah. It's, it's, but I, you know, I've, it, it is that old cliche of, of um, you know, you're alone, but you're not lonely, you know, and I don't get bored because I've got my CNN anchors to entertain me. <laughs> And I, I do love my, I, not that I think that I'm great and I love my own company and think, oh, I love my own company. I'm going to make myself a lovely dinner and, oh, aren't I great? It's a bit like I can um, I can just just regroup within myself. We all need to regroup. You know, you need to, you need to find that time alone. And unfortunately, I, I need quite a lot of it because I'm a little bit spooky. <laughs> Well, you're you're taking. Let let me pivot to another subject now, mm. um, which is really very, very, very exciting. When I heard about it, I really was very excited for you. The scoop. Uh, Gillian Armstrong, the legendary director, mm. Gillian Armstrong, is going to uh, direct uh, a. I think it's a series of Butterfly on a Pin. Mm-hmm. And you're going to you're pivoting to your third career as executive producer. Thank you. So Thank you're going you. to be you're going to have to really gather your forces, aren't you? And you think I'd be really really excited about this? Mm. You think I would? Because it's uh, it's been going on for about a year. These secret talks and the and because you know selling the rights to Butterfly and a Pin, I had fears of it being on Channel Seven with Alana's tragic past. Tune in on Sunday, 7.30 for the first of a two-part series. And I just had this fear of it just being, uh, well, what's the word, ripped apart. And so Gillian Armstrong showed an interest and I, I, I went and met with her. And we... What's she like? Well, she's very, very, she's very, very small. She's mm-hmm. very, very smart. She's, she's, she's... She thinks much, you know, she, she's already thought of the next thing before before you've even thought of. She's actually, she actually was quick, more quick-minded than me. Like I can usually think on seven different levels. Mm. Not that I'm smart, that I'm, but I'm distracted on seven different levels. Mm. She's distracted but focused. Mm. And she's, um, she, she's really, she's great for women. Like she loves women. She, she really loved this because it was, you know, a, a girl coming from the ashes and rising like a phoenix. Mm. And I think the whole thing is going to be here. Is this, is this sort of the way she was talking about Butterfly? It was yeah, the, the redemption story and, yeah. She, what did, what did she love about it? What did she love? Yeah, what did she love? What did she most love about it? The story? Me, was basically me, love. It was me. Yeah, me. She loved what she really loved and which is why I liked her because she... Um, she realised it was really a a very sad, fraught relationship between a mother and a daughter, and a, a mother who never really understood her daughter because uh, there was abuse in the family, and we never, um, you know, Mum and I had this such trouble over it over the years because it happened when I was twelve, and Mum couldn't accept it, and she accepted it, you know, four months before she died, so that. You know, it's, it starts off with, you know, Mum's Suicide, that book, and ends with, you know, a letter to my mum when she's dead. And uh, that, that's, it's a very hard... Um, and, I, and I was really glad Gillian got that it was, you know, sort of an unspoken love story between my mum and I, who we didn't... We didn't... Mum couldn't tell me she loved me and I really couldn't tell her I loved her. But in death, of course... As soon as you get the call, oh, my God, I loved her. Oh, my God, she was amazing. My mother was amazing. And it was only when I was writing the book that, you know, and, and, and that, was, that was quite hard in um, handbag to keep mum out of it because she's so, she, you know, she's still in the back of my own. Well, she oh, used to be forefront. She's over everything in your life, doesn't she? She's... I know, but she's, she has, her voice has diminished a bit. Although when I signed the, um, 
the rights to the to the movie. I, I was a bit tragic. I um I actually my Catholic side came out and I actually did this and had a little tear and said, "Mom, please please forgive me. I I I will make sure that they make you that that, that you're presented in you know." With the dark humour and the sadness that I know you you had, and, and look, she was very sharp and and, and negative, but mm. you know there was another side to us. So that she she'll be very 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 hard to cast. Mm. But that, that's um Rob Connolly's the producer who he's he did uh, Romulus my father, and he's just about to direct the dry. And he's directed a movie called The Dry, which is coming out I think in January. Mm. So he's he's going from director to producer because Gillian's the Mm. And it's, it's it's like a 10, 12 part series, and it'll be either on it'll be streamed with uh, Stan, Netflix, or it, 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 it look it's quite unbelievable. I, I I can't quite believe it. I actually can't believe it, the handbag of happiness is on the shelf. I walked past some <laughs> um, readings in Ackland Street yesterday, and I thought hmm, hmm, it's not it's not in the front window. <laughs> not where is it? Not in the front window. So I barged in there with more front than Myers. And I said, um, basically, I extorted them. I said, look, if I sign some books, you need to put them in the window. And this, they're, they're, um, they did. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, drag yeah. them. Go go to every bookshop. And you love the way I moved from the movie. <laughs> you love my segue from the movie straight back to handbag again. That, that, that's that's my, my CNN um, knowledge. Very well. deftly done. Very mm. deftly done. Terrific, terrific. Um, Quite, quite extraordinary. We've we've um, run out of our time, mm. but I'm going to um, I'm going to call up some audience questions. Mm. Um, I sure you, I'm sure you want to um, uh, hear from um, uh, what have we got here? We've, we've, we got, to we've got a lot of people saying gorgeous things about you. I, I can't see anything. I've I've got a um. I, no. I can see a few favourite faces. I love the interpreter up there. He's already ta taught me to say, uh, I, he, he said, I hope that there's, there's a person, that means you look beautiful. Oh, there's a deaf person, nice in, the yes. a deaf yes. person yes. in the audience and, and he's yes. teaching, let's have that stories and he's doing this in, in the thing and he's taught me to um, do. Alana, this yes, is so. uh, Stephanie speaking. Um, I'm that yeah. member of the audience. You're not deaf. Uh, this is Stephanie speaking he's, through the. He's interview. speaking. Oh, which way? Where, oh, there you are, Stephanie. Oh, Stephanie, did you see this, love? I, I learned it. It says you look beautiful. I did. I did see that. Thank you, Alana. He's quite handsome, uh, Matthias. Isn't he, yeah. Stephanie? Alana, I used to work for you a long time ago. Maybe you don't remember. It probably was 15 years ago. Um, I worked at your uh, Alana Hill office, and I actually remember that you wanted to sign how to sign, know how to sign chocolate, and boy, and sex back then when we worked when I worked in your what office. What was your job? What was your job, love? <laughs> uh, so back then, I was just an intern doing an internship. So I was doing some work experience in your office just for a very brief term. Was I nice uh, to you? Years ago now. Was I nice to you? Of course you were nice to me. No, you were very funny. I remember you being very humorous and very funny and a very open person. And uh, it was just, I do remember that um, you wanted to sign, know how to sign chocolate, boys and sex. I just thought it was hilarious and it was a memory. Who did I want to sign that, love? Tyson does a wonderful Stephanie. Yeah, <laughs> he really does. He's, 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 he's really doing well. Here we go. Anyone else has got a question? Yes, they have. Uh, shall, we, shall we carry on? Okay, so Laura wants to know, are you ever going to continue Louise Love? Well, I, I'm a bit confused now about, about my career. I don't know whether I'm an executive producer <laughs> or an author or a designer. Um, I do, I really do miss clothing. I, I had to go to Zara yesterday and it was, it was unbelievable. No one, no one addresses you. No one talks to you. I could have stolen things that was that bad, um, and I miss the. Uh, I really miss the fabrics, the the parades. It used to. Yeah, you didn't even ask me if I missed it. You just asked if I was going to go back, didn't you, love? Um, 
I would love to, but you need um, you need a lot of money. And because I didn't get filthy, filthy, filthy rich with my Fume app, um, I'm looking. You know, I have to look for a backer. But now I've got the um, I've got a handbag of happiness to promote. And the other secret there is even that maybe being turned into a little bit of a situation too, because they've seen the light with me. These mm -hmm. film people have seen the light. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I do. I do. I would love to get back into fashion. I, no, not fashion, but I'd love to make clothes again because I've got nothing to wear. I, I, I know there's a lot of people who would uh, be uh, waiting with bated breath for that for that to happen. Uh, yeah. Another question from Jane Kneebone. Uh, oh, Jane, Jane, asks, Kneebone. Jane asks, how do you how do you manage the fume? Jane Kneebone, that's a very good question. I manage the fume by being alone, being alone, listening to music. And one thing I did learn that, that I'm thrilled with is I bashed down a wall about four weeks ago and it really fixed me up for about four days. What you do is you find a wall in the house that that is um it's not a it's not a it's a, it's a stud wall or it's a, it's a wall that can be knocked down and then you just bash into it and I bashed away for a, a good twelve hours. Um, but I don't think you can ever really properly manage the fume. People just have to accept that you it's actually good to uh, to tell people you can if people say how are you you just be honest and say i'm fuming i'm angry and i think it's much better than going i'm fine thank you i'm fine because you can people can tell whether you're fuming so i think to to, to embrace the fume and just just if you have to be with people just say i'm, I'm fuming mm. yeah just be honest yeah be honest with the love did that help jane jane you look terrific yeah i can uh, see i can see <laughs> Jane, Jane actually was one of the um, um, is one of the mothers from my son's school. Oh, fabulous! Yeah. She, there's a whole chapter in there about there's a whole chapter in there. Yeah. I hope she's one of the nice ones. I imagine well, she's one of the nice ones. Uh, every mother knows that the moment you walk into the, your child's school gates, you are being judged, ripped apart, and you're 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 put into a little slot. And there was a lot of little slots. There was I made up my own slots. There was the Sams which were the single arty mothers. And then there was the um, the Fots, friends of the school. Um, and you, in that chapter, it's, you, you'll see exactly what... Um, Do you, you, know. like, you, like a, you like an anthropologist in that chapter? I really... Well, I wanted to start up my own um, subgroup within that group, but no, there wasn't enough people to take, <laughs> take it on. It was... <laughs> um, we've, we've got one from Xing, Xingnan Ren. Um, is a this is a, this is a very deep deep question. Uh, what parts of your psyche do you tap into most to imagine and to write? What parts of my psyche? Hmm. Every part, love. Every part that's available to me. I try to clear my mind, and if I have, and, and because I've I got a, I've usually got a chapter in mind that I have to write about. I I look at photographs. I, I relive the situation and go back in time and actually really live it. So I, I tap into the realness of what happened. Mm. Does that make sense? Oh, it certainly does. So you, I think it's interesting that you use prompts like um, photographs and- I do. Mm. I go through emails. I, re, I go through a lot of emails. I, I go through texts because I'm a great text. I'm not a great texter, but I love to text. I, I prefer a text than a phone call. Because I don't have many close friends and stuff, I've I've only got I've got three or four people. I've got a actually maybe two people I've got a phone relationship with. My, my friend Estelle and and Andrew and oh, there's a few other people. Some of my son's friends. He's not aware of that. I think he came home, so I've got to be very careful. But I've got a, I've got a relationship with, with some of his young friends. Is he I'm advising them online. Is he listening at the door? Well, Ed, love. <laughs> Yeah, I just got the. Okay. Yes. You got the teenage, huh? I got the yes. Yeah, you got the teenage, huh? Do you want to come um, into the Zoom, love, and say hello to people? No. Yeah, no. Come and have a look. Here they are. Look. Uh, Marcel's mother's there. Marcel's mum. What the? Uh, do, 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 put your head. Don't say what the fuck. No, I'm okay. No, he's there. All right. <laughs> 
Please we're going go. to we're going to finish on on a question yeah. from me, um, and uh, it's a very simple one. Uh, Tell me. You 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 have had a lot of texture in your life. Um, texture. That's a great word. Texture. That's that's texture. my poetic prose. Um, what brings you joy? What smooths things out? What bring, what do you love? Quite a lot of things smoothing out, smooth things out. Edward, Edward and I in a good mood um, is starts is is really smooths everything out. Him, him and I are getting on well. I'm 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 quite good. Um, I think what's what what's what smooths me out. You also you also have a habit of of going um, harvesting other people's gardens on evening walks. So oh, I still I got the uh, impression oh, that a little bit you, of they quite enjoyed that. I like to take things from people a little bit. I like if I look at it, there's this, there's there's a if you're walking along and, and there's an overhang and there's some lovely hydrangeas on the pavement, I believe they're mine. I believe the lemons are mine. I believe um, everyone likes something for free, and I know it's tragic. I've got a lemon tree in the garden, and yet I will steal someone else's lemons just so I've, just so I think, oh, I've got something for free. Look at me go! Look at me go! Um, I, I think a drive in the car really really helps. Um, I think I, I think a you know a great a great Netflix thing helps. But what what's really got me by is Rachel Maddow. Um, she, she's and the, the, the news. I love the news. When, when you're a bit lonely, uh, not lonely, but when you're at home alone, then the news is. It's the first thing I, I do. For basically, to see if Trump's been shot or assassinated because I cannot believe he's still alive, <laughs> and then to see if um if I'm may have died in the night and my fantasy of um saving the world from Trump has come true, and I, I'd see if, that, if I'm on the news for that. <laughs> That sounds mad, but you can see what I mean. Um, no, I understand. I yeah. understand. So exactly. I, I live in a bit. I, 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 I do dance routines in my head. I, I do that a lot. Not, not physically. A complete dance routine. Like I'll listen to music and I've, I've done a complete Nadia Comaneci. Do you know Nadia Comaneci? Yes, yeah, the yeah. gymnast. Yeah. She got 10 out of 10. I loved her. I, mm. I do flips and things in my head to keep me, to keep me sort of sane. Mm -hmm. I never ever ever sit still. I never sit still. I'm all. I never. I do the dishes, ha housework. I actually quite a lot of things. I, I do. Um, I know. I don't reach out to people. Oh, this is to give me joy. Listen to me. I've gone. Oh my God, I've gone negative and gone depressed. What gives me joy? Mini magnums. Yes. Can a connection with people. If 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 I know this is. I know this is really ridiculous. But I, I, and I will sound a bit like a martyr and I'll sound a bit like I'm a goody two shoes. But I, I found that if I do a little bit of something, if I do something kind for someone for the day and I get a good, and I get good feedback, like I'm acknowledged and they really, really appreciate it, I'm thrilled. But they have to really appreciate it because if they don't, mm. no point. I think we, yeah, I'm grateful. <laughs> you, like, you like a thank you. I love a thank you, but not an overdone thank you. Not an overdone. No, I don't like an overdone. An elegant thank you. Yes. Well, I'm going to I'm going to say a very elegant thank you to you, Alana. You're always an absolute joy to uh, to interview, and uh, I have to just mention I haven't gone on to the uh, to more audience questions because they were really all just um, thank yous to you. Very elegant thank really? you. Really, I need. Done. You need to photo, screenshot them and send yes. them to me. I, I, I think I think Lucy will make them all available. And just before I throw back to Lucy and mm -hmm. um, thank everybody for listening, and uh, I'm sure you enjoyed that chat as much as I did. Uh, Alana is going to scroll through the gallery of your mm. gorgeous faces, and mm. she's going to um, award uh, a five hundred dollar prize for yes. the. Best Dressed head. So it's if you not, can, not just... actual, it's, not, it's not actual cash, but the five hundred dollars. It, it, it's 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 a lovely situation. It's. <laughs> can I tell them what the gift is. Yes, please. I'll, I'll tell you what the gift is. It's 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 the um the deluxe version of butterfly and a pin. It's the book version of butterfly and a pin. It's the audio of butterfly and a pin, 
And then it's the, the that's the handbag pattern. Yeah. And it's also a huge bouquet of flowers and a Louise Love um, costume that is that you can um, go on the website, even though the, the, it says sold out, it's not really all sold out. There's a few things in the garage. So oh, you'll be great. able to, um, I can give you a, a, it's actually probably worth $1,000 that price. Yeah, I'm, I was just about to say that. It's actually probably worth $2,000. Actually, it's $2,000 <laughs> because each dress in that garage is like $1,000. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm hoping well, to get Burgwood so I can do some sort of a scam. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's a bad side of me. That, that, that's bad. You know, at least I haven't arranged my own burglary. That'd be really no, good. no. Oh. Let's let yes, let's let's not talk about burglary. So we began on a burglary and we're ending on on uh, the joy. And thank you again, uh, Lucy. It's back to you, and oh, I think you're yeah. going to arrange for uh, Alana to have a look at the gallery, aren't you? Oh yes, great. I'm going to, oh, I, I, and I don't. I'm not going to announce um, the winner on live because I think that's um, unkind. And so. <laughs> there was another way of doing it, Jan. We had it worked out. Oh, did we? And I've yeah. just, I've just completely forgotten. Yeah, you have. Because remember, I said that I didn't so want I'm to. A, I'm a nice blank. Person. Okay. Yep. <laughs> so what the, the people, <coughs> the people who wanted to enter that competition, will then take a, will take a screenshot of themselves now, and then um, it, they're going to send it to Jan, and then Jan's going to send it to me, and, and then I'll, the person will know privately. Who the, who the winner was, because right. I think that's a fair way of doing it, don't you? Yes, I, I would correct that <coughs> and say send it, send it to um, send it to Lucy, who mm. we're, we're going to Lucy now. Lucy's going to um, wrap up the event and um, uh, tell us uh, how the, how the, um, how the um, best dressed head is going to work. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, Lucy would like to enter the competition um, please send a screenshot of your head to uh, events at betterred.com.au um, that's events at betterred that's b-e-t-t-e-r-r-e-a-d.com.au send a screenshot to us along with your name and contact details and we'll send those through to Alana and she can choose the best dress yeah, that'd be good I've got the election all night but in between the election I'll be, um, I think, I think, I think Trump's, uh, what does everybody think, Biden? Oh, I can't hear you all, can I? Who, put your hands up if you think if Biden's going to win. Trump? Oh, Stephanie Miller? You really think Trump's going to win? <laughs> no, no, hand up for Biden, Alana. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. <laughs> so, yeah, Biden's got to win. America is in a... Oh, it's oh, it a very dystopian, dreadful, it's a dictatorship. Hmm. Once again, yeah. those words are, are used by Rachel Maddow, dictatorship, dystopian. Is it dystopian if I use it correctly? Dystopia, yes. yes. Dystopia. What's dystopian mean? Upo utopia, the opposite of utopia. Dyst uh, dystopian? Oh, that's a terrible world then, isn't it? Shocking, shocking, shocking. That, it's, my, it's my world in a minute. We've got you, think. so we'll get through it, Alana. Well, it's my world in a minute when I put off here and Edward hears me and he goes, what were you saying? <laughs> you might have thought, Mom, you're so uncool. I'm terrified. I'm actually terrified to end the call. I've got separation anxiety and don't want to leave you because then I'm going to be alone. But look, I really want to thank, I, I really, really, really thank you all for joining. It was, I've been nervous all day and um, I'm really, 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 I'm really proud of this book. I, I really am. And I really hope you love it and good night and thank you I, I, i've really loved it i almost feel a little bit emotional thank you everyone for coming and thank you alana and janice for um hosting and writing your book and thank you tyson for interpreting thank um, you tyson thanks Did anyone, no one got to see tyson he's actually very handsome <laughs> no he's there oh, we can see thank you alana hey yeah. stephanie has one more question sorry oh, Lucy. Yes. You to type the email address that you want to send um those headshots to janice into the chat for um people to write down if that's okay yes i've met stephanie before haven't i i know stephanie have i met stephanie before in the store yes yes we did meet we did you did i remember yes all right. Well, everyone, good night. Thank you. Uh, do I press leave? I'm terrified yeah, I'll press it and then I'll be doing something. Every, everybody's going to press leave. 
So good night, yeah. everybody. You all press first so I don't feel lonely. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Oh, they're all going to go in. They're all leaving me. Oh, and didn't get to see you, Jack. Am I still on? Oh, better go. Oh, God knows what I'm going to do. Good night. And I, I can see there. There's my, there's my friend from Canberra. Hello, love. Good night, everybody. Thank you. And good night, Stephanie Miller. Lovely, lovely to see you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. See you. Everybody.